All right, so if this works, you'll actually have a recording. So this is Jay's desktop model three. As you see, it's, or not, depending on the angle and the light, there's tons of scratches all over it. It's very dirty, uh, very nasty. And um, we're gonna start by cleansing the dirt and the layers off of it with a light scrub. I'm using 220 just to get to the actual color. As you can see, it's gray. Well, maybe this is not helping. See, this is gray, and that's dirty. I was saying you can see all the dirt, the uh, scratches on the side. We'll take care of that later. So, at this point, I'm just doing a rough, a rough descaling of the what seems to be years of crud on it. Then I'll clean it with a uh, As you gotta remember is this is time consuming There's if you want to take your spray can Clean your print your computer and go ahead and paint it go ahead I won't judge you I don't really care if you want to do it so it lasts years and you're not afraid of touching your computer every time you want to use it because the paint may peel or bubble or come right off then you got to put a little more effort in it than just a quick spray can with Rust-Oleum. Now, what I do here is use everywhere for automobile. Painting a computer or anything else is 90% prep, prep time and 10% paint. But if you don't take the time to do the prep, your paint will end up having to be repainted again because you didn't do proper prep. The choice is yours. Unlike a lot of places, you don't need to literally, um, how shall we say, um, remove the paint off the plastic. All you need to do is make the surface clear of its first top shine because you're going to repaint into it. The material you're paint you're scratching right now with the paint with the sandpaper, you're going to do like I'm doing here a rough, then you're going to pass a 500 wet, then you're going to prime it. Once it's primed, that primer which is a uh, plastic adherence primer looks like this. I bought it at the auto shop. It's like $13 a can. Not cheap, but great coverage. You'll need one can can do two, three computers. Um, and all this tiny little scratches you see will serve as grit material for it. Think of it if it's something super flat, nothing adheres to it. But if there's tiny little scratches, think of the finger slots here. And you put something into it and it goes in between well it bounds all that and it has twice the surface to grip on therefore it's even better than it was originally so basically you gotta at least send it once down well in reality you're gonna send it far more than once you're gonna send it down once dry like I'm doing now to make sure that all encrusted dust is out of the plastic paint coverage you got. You gotta get all these little grooves here. And then you don't want all these rough ridges that she's showing 
So what you're going to be doing is you're going to sand it so it becomes nice and fine. All these spots like this is where you get rid of all these scratches. A very little effort. That scratch that I on top, I'll show you a picture of it or, uh, later. That scratch right here is barely perceptible here. And once I'm done painting with a primer, it'll completely disappear because the primer fills these kind of one eighth of an inch deep gouges. Which is another reason why I don't I don't paint with uh, primer included in the paint because that's just an adherence primer they put into the paint. It helps bond, but it doesn't help fill. asking questions and stuff but this will do I'll be able to see it later listen to my corny voice and yes when you clean it I don't know the lighting is not great in here but you'll see there's some discoloration where I just rubbed here there's some white showing it doesn't matter this frank people is gonna have gone too far the plastic under the gray is actually white. Well, it's a dirty beige kind of color. Um, and if it shows when you're doing an even flat surface sanding, not, you don't, I'm not putting heavy on it. If you notice, I'm keeping my hand flat and I'm just going with it. Well, if those things show up, it means that you have ridges. It's not perfectly, it's not perfectly flat. There's little edges lifting up. So by sanding it, you're sanding everything back flat. So when you paint, everything will be perfectly flat so that's that shows up not a big deal i'm just going to do half of this and show you with this where the, the the scratch marks were and where i'm going to do half of it and you can see the difference between the two right away Some people like to use the piece of wood for using flat surfaces. Personally, I don't. I prefer to feel it. But that's just me. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. There is no real wrong thing as long as you take your time to do it. Here. I'll wipe this down here. So, I don't know if you see the scratches. See those, these gouges that were running all the way down. See, there's this period here. They're all faded out. Well, once this is all done, it'll be all even, and all the paint will be even on top of it, and this paint, the scratches just disappear. Plain and simple. If you paint directly over it with a primer, you have a good chance that primer will not fill that hairline scratch and what happens is that now you have a crease and when you paint it you'll still have a crease and when you look at it from a certain angle you'll see that crease running along the side of your case and you're like eh. now if all you care to put is five dollars of paint effort into it then that might be sufficient and for some people that's okay Again, there's no bad way of doing it as long as you're happy with it. But if you intend to sell your system later on, you might discover that people are going to go, what the hell happened to this thing? Five-year-old painted it? And people get offended when somebody makes a comment like that. Well, I'm trying to get rid of a piece of tape that's down here. I prefer to use my nail and alcohol because the, the, the sandpaper gets clogged up with scotch tape and glue and all that crap and just bogs down the, the sandpaper which I need to, to use. Now when you get these edges here, what you want to do put your finger on the I'm not folding it 
I'm laying it across the ridge, but I'm using my two fingers to press down. You see it lifts. And the only point of pressure I have is at the tip of my fingers and at the flat. So when I do this, I'm actually doing the groove without damaging, without flattening it. I'm not trying to cut this angle here because it comes sharp and then it's a half moon drop. I want to keep that because that's part of the case. If I go like this, now I'm sending the angle here and that changes the plastic very quickly because it's sharp angle. What you could do also is do like this if you're afraid of doing it and then do like this. That way you only get the groove and you're not touching the top part by flat cutting the angles. Little trip there. The biggest trick is keep your hand flat. You're not trying to go in any all sort of weird directions and stuff. A flat hand right on the surface. Up and down, left or right, cir circle, straight lines. I usually like to use this for the 220 paper that I'm using right now. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm, not, I'm just scratching. I'm using, letting the paper, use the uh, sandpaper do its job without me damaging the material. What I'm trying to do is to get rid of all that crud in the paint so that it's smooth again. I use the edge of the table a lot to do this. Ah, it's starting to come into the right color. It's starting to be gray again instead of smoker's delight beige. I don't know what happened to this thing, but man, previous auto was a smoker, I can tell you. And right now, you see me doing the top. I haven't done the bottom. I take the bottom off when I do it. Um, your hands is your best attribute. You put your hand, you can feel there's bumps, nicks, something stuck on the glue, a piece of old glue or something like here there's a notch feel it so i'm gonna bring my sandpaper and let it do its work scrub it a bit and boom it's gone and yeah it's a little wider than it than great but i'm gonna be painting on it so it doesn't matter this whole section here is a pain lots of corners lots of edges and all these are sharp edges you don't want to round these off unless you're intentional about it and if you do it intentionally you're gonna to have to do the entire thing all of them um, treat all of this as one flat surface and then work all these separately as flat surfaces so you would literally be doing this as a flat surface and then add this one as a flat surface I'm grabbing the corners a bit and do this it doesn't again this will not have a lot of damage because it's usually untouched most of the time it's just to scratch it to work it for later the inside of the computer unless the owner wants me to but there are two surfaces that are not painted on this computer the inside you may think it's painted but it's not this gray on the inside is all splash painting because when they do it at the factory the machine is she splashes everywhere inside the case because the two components are separate
here it's the half moon again see i just put it there and i put my fingers and the pressure up and down i have four fingers on it i'm putting two fingers on the top because i want to put that pressure here and the pressure here this in the middle i'm not doing this because otherwise i'm going to cause a groove so i do it wide and i let the, pa the paper do all its work all by itself it's not about tearing the hell out of it it's just about sending it so it's smooth no more old paint that's just flat short surfaces this part you gotta watch out for this is flimsy if you put any kind of pressure you will bend it or you'll break it i've seen these break easy enough i usually put my hand behind it when i'm working to get a bit of form of support If you ever want to get your computer color coded, to the, go to a dealership and you want to get it color coded like I do, the best possible way, there's two places where you can get the best paint code on this machine. You take off this TRS-80 label, you know that tag that's here and on, you take it off and this will be the most accurate color you've got because this is a spot that never sees the sun, never sees the daylight, never gets smoke in it, you'll rarely get dirt under it because it's glued on it. The tape sticks and seals it so it doesn't really get affected the other other place would be under your security tag that'd be another good place for it um, if it's present quite often they're no longer present or they're gone or they've been peeled and they're just mostly glue uh, some people use a razor blade so you'll see scratches down in those corners uh, this is not a good place to pull because this has not been painted this is overspray. See, it's dark here and light here. They just went when they sprayed, and it does an overspray. You can tell it's an overspray. So this is not a good place to look for a color. Maybe under the feet, but not really. The best spot is right here on this spot right here for the computer, and that's where I normally get mine. Done. Now this armrest has seen some love. A lot of programming done on this case. But even though it looks without paint, I'm still going to sand it because I want to get that yellow nicotine out of it. Now I'm not sure if it's nicotine per se, but that yellowing usually is an indication that, especially when it's yellowing and then it, see, it turns out whitish. Usually that somebody smoked around this computer along the way. So I usually try to get that out. Why? If you ever paint it behind a smoker in their apartment, you're going to find that the reality of smoking is that nicotine will transcend any paint. Maybe not acrylic or silver, but on regular paint, it'll just seep right through. So you'll get shading. You may not get a yellowish tone because this is not painted white. But if it was painted white, you would get a yellowish tone outline even though it's fresh paint on it. It comes back up. So I usually try to get that out. Um, you know, without going to great depth, get what I can. I'll get the rest of it. That's The 500. Now, why do I separate the bottom from the top? Because of the edging here. I need to, because when the case closes, if it's in different color. You'll go from this color to the same color, and then you have a different shade in here. So it's got to be split apart to get the inside of this rail here on the edge. And that's why I would take it apart right now. I'll be back in a sec. So here I am. I took it apart. Took the screws out. I figure I spare you the exercise of seeing seven screws being taken out. So 
like I was talking about see this edge that all needs to be also cleaned out so when I do my spray painting it'll come across and it'll be nice and flush because it has to come to the edge of this part here as well so I'll do that real quick and then I'll attack the bottom part of the case again this is a flat surface don't bend on the side I have the fabric I'm only in the tip of my fingers keeping everything flat I'm not here to tear apart the plastic I do give it some support here now if you send me a case I will not clean the inside of the case I do a print job I do a paint job I am concerned with the outside of it so all this yellowish stuff that's in here that will remain if you send it to me that will end up back at you if you want a perfectly clean case you can wash it afterwards but that is just smoke and dust it just needs to be wiped down with a good vinegar based product that's one there's the second part look at all that sanding came out of it the sanding is not recommended to be done in your house unless you really hate your wife and want to pick up sanding stuff for the next six weeks in your house so the bottom part what I was trying to explain in my document if anybody's read it is that when they paint it they paint the edging and all this is splash you can feel with your finger it's really rough this is smooth this is rough because it's a psh, psh. and you see it clearly they have a line all around they put a piece of, of craft paper and they spray and they were doing this by thousands monthly so these lines are very common and tell you that this was not painted when I repaint one unless you request it for all of it to be repainted this I never repaint because I have to take off all these labels with a heat gun and everything else if you don't nobody has ever painted this in the past I don't see why it should be painted now now for me not to paint that I'll be taking off the legs and I'll be applying some tape over it So the original case color will still show after it's done. Besides, you got these great tags here, manufacturing tags where it was done what month, what day. So I don't know when this was done, but it looks like an 83 tag, the 59th day of the year. If you want to look it up, you'll know approximately when this was built. At least this piece was built. Um, 1220 things all have codes in them you'll find them quite often uh, 1683 so this is a June computer now a lot of people keep this that's up to you I don't really care I usually just pull it out and I pull the three staples and I get rid of it this RF quote unquote RF shield usually gets in the way of everything including to clean it I don't clean the insides now I'm just gonna show you an easy way of cleaning this. Here's a, an easy way to I need the dust to be out of it. I take a painter's brush. And I just it's great because it goes into all nooks and crannies and crevices, and you get all the dust and dirt off of it very quickly. See? That way I don't have to deal with it later when I go to paint it. But otherwise, I'm not cleaning it. Because I'm not painting this side, I'm painting this side. I'm only doing it to get rid of it. Now, for me to clean all that without, well, paint all that. Where's my tape going to? No. I'm not going to use the blue tape. I'll be using blue tape to cover this whole platform here. I want to send down the edges and everything else before. But basically, I'll be putting blue tape on this whole square, the top surface, not this part, because that needs to get you painted. Here we go again. And 
this crevice can be a pain to do. Um, basically, I roll my sandpaper like this so it fits the, the bottom part of it. So I can hit the bottom and then I clean the bottom and then I do the sides. And voila. Same thing for that side. You just gotta watch out for the holes, but otherwise it's the same thing. Why is this important? Well, when you paint it, if it's not properly cleaned off, paint bubbles. And paint bubbles. It makes the paint look like shit. things sticky. Heat guns is your friend. Now make sure you keep alcohol and all that stuff away from it. Because you know heat guns are a great source of fire. I use one of these I got one with my 3D printer but basically it's a scraper but it's elastic. If you use a razor blade all you're going to do is scratch the surface and you're going to have to sand it to make sure the scratches are gone. You can find one of these with a 3D scraper. Um, I think they cost a dollar a piece. They're a thin piece of plastic. Maybe even your painter place can find it. Taking off glue and labels off if you intend to destroy them. There, gone. I can see me is killing me. sometimes these break easily enough especially in shipping so be mindful of it now the only exposed part of it is the back side and the inside of it so if you're doing just painting for painting you can because these will be hidden by the case the case comes on top of it and the only thing left is showing is the inside of it that's where your power plug and all that's at um, we want it to match everything else and you have a ridge in the bottom of it Look at all that shit in there. It's like this thing has been underwater. So much crud on it. pass a bit of alcohol on the bottom part here only reason I'm doing that is not to clean it well that's a 
part of the reason is for the tape adhesion. If this is dirty or oily, the tape won't stick. And there's nothing less painful is to have that tape come right up when I'm working. So I am not trying to clean it, I'm trying to degrease it. Especially on the edges, the middle looks nice, but especially on the sides. Just make sure that that doesn't, when the alcohol evaporates, I'll be taping it. I'm going to take a two minute break and I'll be back in a second. Alright, so after the alcohol is dry, I'm going to find the tedious, probably the most tedious part of this. Put the tape on it. Now, you'll notice I'm going far on each end. And all I need is an overlap. Doesn't need to be a big overlap. It only needs to be a small one. Save on tape, as you're gonna be using a lot. And you notice I go over on each side, and I'll explain why in a minute. Once it's all done, this blue tape won't peel any of the labels below it. It's a painter's tape, you can find it anywhere at Home Depot, etc. Rona, for the Canadians listening in or Ace Hardware. They're about three bucks a roll. Um, I don't like the green one. Um, it seems to not stick as well as the blue. But if you're fearful of damaging your case, you can always use the green one. But after a couple of hours, it just basically self peels. It's like a super drying tape. It's made for very sensitive paint jobs. Not for this. And voila. Now, I have these two edges are perfectly straight. Now all I have to do is do these edges. And this is why I did this. Is I could bend it. And tape is great for that because now taking my label very slowly and just at the edge of the plastic, I just run along. Just run along I'll come back to that hole in a second. And I'm running the blade not against the plastic. The back side of the blade is running on the plastic. So I'm cutting the tape without rubbing the blade on the plastic. It's a technique. You'll get to it when you go slowly and don't be light-handed. All you're trying to cut is the tape. If you miss it like I just did, just go back to it. Just gently saw at it and it'll come back out. After a while you get some tape on it and you just flip your blade around and just go back to it and do that side. Voila. For this I usually split it in two and I work the circle. Voila. Doesn't look hard to do because it isn't after a while and if you screw it up put a new piece of tape on it but again it shouldn't take you very long to figure out how to do it now i run my finger on the ridge to make sure that the tape is pressed against the plastic it also marks it very easily for me to just bring the blade in i know where to put the blade slash edge to get to the rib to get to the tape where i wanted to cut you saw me i missed some up there on the top I'll get back to it when I'm done my the, the large portion of the job. Here I just drive straight through the hole. It doesn't have to be perfect. The hard part is getting back to the other side and finishing your edge. Once you're done with your edge, don't take I put my finger. Thank you. Come back, split this guy in two, and do the half circle. Edge here. There. 
Voila. Now you get a deep bottom. Well, that ends the prep work for step one. Step two I'm going to do is I'm going to run alcohol over all the edges, over all of this, so that I can get all the dust out of it. Um, I will also do an extra cleaning of this case by using 1500 wet, or 600 wet, sorry. Yes, 600 paper. Now you can get that 220, the 600, the 400, the 1500, and the 3000. Ace Hardware usually has a count of just a leaf paper. Now, paint shops usually don't. They only carry it for wood, and you're not going to find those high numbers at the paint shops. Um, they usually have the lower end. This is more considered um, body shop, so if you want to look at your body shop place, they may have it. Um, and basically, a bowl of water. You dip it in there, it's paperback. It does two things. It serves the paper as a lubricant. We want to wet this. Basically, we're going to be putting water all over this. And when you touch it when it's wet, you're still going to find that it's kind of roughage because the roughness comes from the 220. There's good little grooves and it's scratched. You scratch the surface and got through the material, prep it deeply to be ready to be painted. But it needs to have a top surface cleansing. Every little bump that you feel with your hand, when you paint over it, if you have a tiny bump, when you paint on top of it, your bump doubles in size. And then you'll have ridges. I do a, five, a 1500 over there to clean all these little tiny bumps. Then when I do my primer, I will only find some light bumps. And I'll, I will sand, wet sand it again. Like I did for the other case. Whoever missed it this afternoon. And then you'll see it in the next piece I will do. And once it's done, I will sand the primer. I will wash it with a hose. And I will let it to dry for a day. Then I will paint it like I did that one. Except it will be painted Radio Shack Gray. Or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the name is of that color paint. People call it all sorts of names. and It's Radio Shack Gray. Or actually, it's not Radio Shack. It would be RCA Gray, I guess. Since it's supposed to match. And basically, this is where I start using circles. Now circles, what it does is that it does a cross hatch. What it also permits is make sure that the deep grooves, if they're too deep and you scratch over, you're pushing the material into it and you're making smaller grooves. So when you put your hand afterwards, it feels like softest surface you've ever felt. It literally feels like glass right now. You could feel it. If I had a microscope to show you this versus this, you would see the difference. I can't. I don't got one. I wish I did. But basically, this is really, really slick. It's like an ice rink. Like, have you ever been on ice? This is that slick. This. Can you hear it? You hear the. It's still rough. This is super slidey. So your hands, your best friend on the wet. Don't be afraid to put water on it. You'll be washing it later. And again, no pressure. This is only to clean the ridges. You can feel it with your hand when you go down here. It's wet, but it's still, it's still rough. Get down to it. And when you sand it enough, you'll feel it when you actually using the sandpaper, you'll feel it how slick it becomes. And you are going to put water everywhere. So again, you can put a tarp if you want to. 
I know how much water ends up on my camera and I just clean it afterwards. I don't really care. Again, tip of the finger for the grooves. Same thing. I'm applying very little pressure here. It's all the sandpaper doing its job. It's all flat. Look at that. Baby's butt is the expression. The gray you're seeing come up on the top when I'm sanding all this stuff here, all this stuff, that's dust and dirt from the sanding previously. It also gives me a gauge how much I'm getting into it. I need more water on that. If you notice, I don't really put a whole lot of effort in cleaning between the slats. If you want to, you can, and that's up to you. But you'll find that the paint, 90% of the paint's on surface, and when you paint it by taking different angles, you'll catch all those inside grills, and you won't be able to tell that, that it's not a 100%, that you have not gone through each grill and done this. That's not needed for this case. It's, um, it works just fine the way it is. Gosh. And yes, it gets slippery with your hands. The trick, I grab a corner and I use the rest of my hand. So I'm always holding the paper when I'm doing my circles. See, I put it down and I hold this between my thumb and my index. So my hands is like this and I curl just one corner. What this permits me is full control over the paper. Otherwise, you're, you might find that the paper sticks to the surface you're sanding. And you see, sanding doesn't take that much time. It's just prep work. Of course, you know, I'm doing these 15 minute spots on a video and I'm not really hiding anything. Maybe when I unscrewed stuff, but that's just for the sake of the video. You couldn't care less about watching me take seven screws out. And some of you have said, hey, $150 for a paint job where I have to take my computer apart and send you just the skins is a lot of money. Sure. You ever send your car for repair and the, all you have is a dent in your fender and the guy takes the fender apart, unbends it, sends it down, paints it to color match your car again and puts it back down and it costs you $2,000? There's a reason. When this video hits two and a half hours for me just doing sanding, that'll be the reason. $150 is really actually not that expensive. The paint is about $25 a can, and it takes about a can for a computer. So there's $25 just in materials. I gotta pay for my paper and sandpaper in my time. But you know, 
You can always watch the videos over and over and learn how to do it yourself and then show me up. Hey, I love people that do their own stuff and then go like, hey, I did this and then I did I improved the method this way to make it easier and it still works. I'm okay with that. I have no problem. I am not God. spots. Make sure nothing is left. So you see I'm not taking it all the way down to plastic everywhere. Some places like here there was really heavy scratched. I took it down to the plastic because the paint's actually the problem. And you can think that you see scratches like this line here. But this line is just a discoloration between what's left of material here and the underside. This is purely smooth. There is nothing to scratch on. It's really clean. I'm going to rinse this off and I'll be right back. Let me pause this video here. So I'm back. And here we have the case that's been cleaned up. It's wet right now. When I run it through the hose, I always run my hand on all the surface, make sure I dislodge everything off of it so that everything is all gone. I'm going to wipe it down, take most of the water out. And normally, what I do is I leave it outside. I have a post that I put it on top of it and I let it dry in the sun. Um, I make sure that it's dry before you proceed to the next step. The dryness is important. The primer will not stick if it's humid or wet or has a liking to be wet. Um, it's a great way to have absolutely zero adhesion and end up with a really, 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 really bad paint job on your hands. Now I wipe most of the stuff off here for the sake of the video. As you see, a lot more water came out of it. I just wanted to show you the differences. As you saw the heavy scratching, I said this looks like scratches, but there's nothing left to scratch. This is just a discoloration between where the scratch happened and the surface that's remaining on top. Here they're really, really deep. I had to go to the plastic. This are not deep. They're just, this, the scratch is to the plastic, but my sanding is not, but there's no scratch, there's no surface to, to catch with your nails. So when you paint it, it will go away completely. Looks bad now, but once it's all painted, and this causes no warping, all I did is remove the paint off of it. Again, this big one here, same thing. It was really heavy over here. A little bit of a deep in cloth, but it's all gone now. Same thing all over here. Slight discoloration here because I had a lot of roughage. This is very, very, very soft now. There's very, very ready for it. Now, I'm gonna set it out to dry and then I'm gonna tack the bottom because the bottom still needs to be sanded down. Be back in a sec. Sorry if you missed a bit there. Who is texting me? Alrighty. Basically, I'm doing the same thing I did for the top. I sand it down. I taped it, and I'm gonna wet sand it. Of course, I'm not gonna put water all over this surface here. And the edges won't catch the water. If it does, replace the piece of tape. It wasn't in place properly the first time. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the edge first. Get it out of the way. Again, 
as for the main case, this is basically to remove any little rough blemishes left from behind from the sanding of the 600. Again, you can sand in a circle if it pleases you better, if you feel better, better about it. What I've seen, no differences in the final product. Um, this is not metal, so it doesn't matter. Now, that said, I'm not pressing hard. If you've got grooves and you can feel grooves at your nail, you've got to get rid of them. Now, all the work I've done, I've made scratches in the paint and scratches, but I have not grooved in the plastic. So everything that's showing the, the plastic underneath is just because the paint has been sanded off, not because I've grooved the plastic out. Because otherwise it'd be out of shape. basically work around the base. part is very satisfying because it's pretty quick to do it. Again, I'm going to go rinse this off and I'll be right back. This is the one I did earlier. As you can see, it's just on his first coat of black and already it's shiny like a motherfucker. I'm sorry if it offends anybody. The way I talk. And you can see the overspray on the inside. And it doesn't matter. Because it's going to look good when I'm done with it. It needs to rest 24 hours before I put the next coat on it. Does it really need the 24 hours? Most paint shop will tell you no. You can probably do it in four. Everybody's got their quirks. Mine is 24 hours. I like the paint to cure before I add more to it because... I get a clean even flow 
of what's thin or thick on the case and where to not reapply paint to make it too thick and then possibly run on the case and then that's a whole new ballpark because I got to wipe every, all the paint off the, the case all over again. So today I used 600 for the first sanding and I used 1500 for my wet sand tap water I use a little bowl um, you saw me clean the case um, the bottom part of the case I use isopropyl alcohol this is 100% it doesn't really have to be 100% I guess um, I just pick up the habit of using 100 because it leaves no residue uh, 91 probably works just as well uh, I wouldn't use 75 or I would not use a soap uh, suspension either because then your soap suspens suspension needs to be washed off and you have a lot more delays in the work you're trying to achieve. Um, 100% wipes down clean, gets rid of grease, oils, and you're ready to tape your back of your surface inside of five minutes. Just not wasting time is something I like to not do. Um, I don't know even know who's watching anymore. But if there's any questions at this point, I am done. I have been recording this time, so I'll be posting the videos in a little bit once I figure out how to extract in the folder and copy all this crap to my network drive and edit. Hopefully it won't sound too bad. So I hope you had fun.